Hi, and welcome back to our continuing series on adult children of emotionally immature parents. We are on chapter 5, and the title of this chapter 5, as you've seen, is How Different Children React to Emotionally Immature Parenting. So this one is going to be a short one because um, there's not much here. It's just very straightforward. So there are two ways that children cope with, with um, how, how there are two ways that children react to emotionally immature parenting. And those two ways are, number one, developing something that is called a healing fantasy. So a healing fantasy is where a child develops uh, this, this idea in their head that one day they're going to be loved, one day they're going to be cared for, one day they're going to have their emotional needs met by their parent or whoever, whoever, whoever is neglecting them, that one day they're going to have those needs met if only they become something. There's something that they need to change in themselves for them to become lovable or good enough or worthy. So they develop this healing fantasy um, that, that there's, there's something inside them that they need to change. Otherwise, that's, uh, otherwise, as a, otherwise they will not be lovable. And so, in adulthood, they will seek relationships where they want that healing fantasy to come true. So you'll find that they are hoping their partners, the, the people they, they have relationships with when they are adults, that these partners will, will meet this fantasy they have in their head about love and about being accepted and being wanted. And they, they, they will expect that if, if, uh, if they thought in their head when they were kids, when they developed the healing fantasy in their head, when they were children, that maybe I, if, if I become rich, famous, um, if, I become, uh, if I dress better, if I get better grades, I'm going to be good enough. So in adulthood, they will be looking for people who will see them and love them for the things that they become. So for them, in a relationship, they'll be trying to, it's like they have to goals, they have to achieve so that they can be worthy of love. And and if, if, if they are not recognized or loved for having achieved those things that they have put in, in, their, in their list of things to be to do to become so that they can become loved they will become very angry they'll be like Ish, bada, i've been doing all these things um can't you see how much i do for you can't you see how much i care for you can't you see how much i i meet this or the other need for you why do you not love me back yet i have done everything that 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 should get me love you know because in their head they believe there's a thing you need to do there's a person you need to be there's a way you need to be for you to be loved, for you to be lovable. They don't believe that this love can just be people loving you because you're worthy and you, you deserve love, you know. So for them, there's this list of things that they believe in their head they have to, to achieve and become for them to be lovable. And so they will develop relationships where they keep seeking for how that healing fantasy can be achieved. And remember, it's very hard for a child when they are, when they are young to, to see their parent as a bad person because... The, 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 the abuse, if you, if you experience abuse as a child, the child does not see the parent as a bad person because they don't have the capacity to see this person in that, in that light. Because it endangers, seeing your parent as a bad person when you're a child endangers your sense of security. Because remember, children don't have plan Bs. Children don't get the opportunity to say, I can go and seek support and love from other places. Children don't know that in their heads. Because they are children. They have not experienced the world like that. As an adult, you can decide if this person you know, is not fulfilling my needs, my emotional needs, I can go and get those needs fulfilled elsewhere. But for children, they can't do that because they don't have that capacity in their head yet. And so for them, they will find ways to justify the maltreatment that they get from their parents. If their parents are emotionally abusive, they will find a way to justify that. They will find a way to excuse that. They'll be like, Maybe my parent does this and this and this and this to me because there's something wrong with me. That's why you hear even like when parents are divorcing or something, children will always think that it is something that they did. Children will always think uh, they must have done something for their parents to be divorcing. Or they will be like, what can I do to make sure that my parents don't divorce? Because they take it upon themselves. They believe that if something is wrong, it's problem, probably because of me. I'm probably the problem. And so they will take it upon themselves to find a way to make sure that things stay uh, safe for them so that they can continue being taken care of. And so that's why it's very, it's very easy for people to develop those healing fantasies that if I become this or the other, I will be lovable. If I become a good child or a, or, or, or a successful child or um, uh, uh, I become patient, I become quiet, I don't, I don't bother my parents, I'm going to be lovable. If I put other people's needs 
in front of my own, I'm going to be lovable. So that's uh, where healing fantasies come from. And that is a strategy that some children might employ to as a reaction to emotionally immature parenting. Um, the other way that, that uh, the number two way that children react to emotionally immature parenting is developing something called a role self. So a role self is something that you take on in, let's say, in your family setup. If you, you know that if you become this particular kind of child, you're going to get the attention and the love that you deserve. You're going to get that reaction that you need from your parents uh, in, in your life. So you'll find that uh, some children will, will decide they're going to become the children. The, 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 some children will become, will realize that it's very easy for them to get love and, and attention when they do very well in school. And so they will chase that academic performance success. They have to be number one. They have to get this excellent good grades, even at the expense of their own mental health, even at the expense of their own physical health. Because they know that if they play that role, they get to get their parents' attention and love and approval. And so it can be anything. It can be different things, different roles that you play in your family for you to maintain whatever role that you are. Some of them will become the children who, they're the ones who provide for the family when they are adults, they have gotten jobs. They, they want to give back to the family everything. They don't even take care of themselves financially. They don't even make sound financial decisions because they, ha they want to give back because they know giving back to the family everything that they have and being the one person that the family looks up to as a provider of some sort um, gives them a position in the family. And that position gives them love, attention, and approval from their parents. And that could be anything. Sometimes it's the opposite side. Some children become um, reactive. You'll find that children, some people, children start abusing drugs. They fall into peer pressure. They, they are doing uh, they, they are skiving school you know like they are doing some things that we consider problematic because they need to to see their parents seeing them they want to feel seen and heard and wanted and loved and so that's developing a role self you develop a a, a a persona that is not the real you because that persona gets you love attention and uh, uh, approval so that's a reaction that most children can have in relation to to emotionally immature parenting so those are the two types of uh, the two types of reactions that you get in that in that scenario, and then children cope differently. So there are two ways of coping with emotionally immature parenting, and one of them is becoming an internalizer, and the other one is becoming an externalizer. And in this in this uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about externalizers, and the next in the next one, I'm going to talk about internalizers. So externalizers are reactive, they are impulsive, they blame others. And for them, life is trial and error. They don't have like these specific goals they want to follow. They don't have this plan that they want to follow with their life. They don't have like, like they have not taken their lives in their own hands for them to make a plan for their lives. So for them, they just do whatever feels right at the moment and just move forward. They don't learn from their mistakes. Those are all externalizers. And um, they expect the world to change because remember, if they are blaming others, they don't think that there's anything in them that needs to change. So for them, they'll, uh, they'll, blame, they'll blame the world and they will expect the world to change so that the world can be a safe place for them. They will have low self-confidence and or, or they may develop the other side, which is a superiority complex because they believe the world needs to change because the world is the problem. There's nothing wrong with me. So they don't even sit down to reflect on their own behaviors, their own emotions, anything. They don't reflect on those things because for them, the problem is the world. So they expect you change, you become better, you fix everything, then I'll show up and just exist, you know. Um, these are people who thrive on instant gratification. For them, there's no, there's no that thing for reward, reward in the future. They're like, let me do what feels good right now. They don't believe in delayed gratification for whatever. Yeah. Uh, they might they might they'll trip other people into responding to their needs. So they may choose manipulation tactics. They may try to make you feel bad for not meeting their needs, whatever needs they are. So we are talking about these are externalizers who have already, of course, become now. Uh, they have already realized that this is the only way to get a reaction. So they will they'll trip you into getting a reaction from you. They will want you to respond to their needs when they need you to respond. They don't understand at you wait. Uh, people will respond later. For them, it's now. Respond right now. I am impressing this right now. I want you to respond right now. Um, the biggest source of anxiety for externalizers is being cut off or being um, not being connected to the family or to the to 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 a person who gives that who, who meets that emotional need. Because again, for them, 
this is all an inner desire to connect. So they're not doing these things because actually they're bad people. They're just doing these things that they do in a, it's, it's reactions, in a desire to connect. They want to connect with you. But the only way they know how to connect with you at this point is being reactive, is being impulsive, is being uh, blaming and expecting the world to react, you know, all those things. Um, these people can be attracted in relationships. Uh, they will find that they're attracted to other impulsive people. Uh, they are overly dependent on others, other people for support and stability. So for them, you will find that they are the people who call you, uh, please send me money, I am struggling with this and the other. But when you send them money, they don't make any good decision with that money. They might go and spend that money in one sitting. So they don't sit and think, uh, I have asked this person for money, they have sent me X amount of money. Maybe if I plan this money visually, I might end up uh, stretching it and catering for my needs for an extended period of time. They don't have that. Remember what you just said, they believe in instant gratification. So they are the people, you may send them that money because you know they are suffering. And then they'll spend, they'll go to the mall and spend that money on one, on one item. Or on that one day, they'll spend the, all the amount of money that you've sent them. Because for them, akuna yo foresight, akuna yo ya kufikiria for the future. Everything is now, now, now. So that, that happens. Um, again, they will guilt trip you again. Now that's where the guilt trip comes in. They will be like, see, you see, I'm suffering. Why are you not sending me money? You know, I don't have this or the other. Why are you not sending me kakitu, nayakutoa, you know? They'll always find a way to guilt trip you into meeting their needs at whatever cost they can because that's how they know how to connect. Um, most people try to avoid them because once you've learned that this person is a person who feels manipulative to a degree, it's like they're trying to make you take care of them. They become you, you're, you're feeling like they're becoming a burden of some sort to you emotionally and sometimes even financially, physically and everything. Some people will try to avoid them because they're like, hey, bana, apana. You have realized when I'm with you, it's just chaos and I don't think I want to maintain this relationship. And remember then that is what gives them the most anxiety, being cut off, being pushed aside. They don't, they don't feel at ease with that at all. Um, most emotionally mature parents are externalizers. And the reason uh, you, you can see from this behavior of externalizers that everything you have said about emotionally mature parents relates to this. Parents who don't take responsibility are emotionally mature. Parents who do not have empathy. Parents who do not take responsibility for their for their life, for their decisions. Parents who do not have uh, the, the desire to make uh, decisions that are long-term. They only make short-term decisions that feel good. All those people are externalizers. And that's why you find most emotionally mature parents are externalizers. They have these characteristics. Um... Externalizers use pain, use, uh, use uh, the impulsivity, like I mentioned before, and the reactiveness to deal with their emotional pain. And the consequences of that impulsivity can bring shame to them. So now they are no longer just dealing with the, the, the pain they have because they have not, their, their needs have not been met, the emotional needs have not been made, met. They also deal with the pain of shame because at some point uh, they will start feeling it's all it's 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 a thing you eventually you start when you when you start realizing that people are avoiding you people are ignoring you people do not want to associate with you you may develop some emotions of shame because you're like what's wrong with me what's happening with me and then maybe that opens up room for introspection for you to get better in one way or the other so yeah for them they they, they will struggle with shame but then <laughs> The, the interesting thing is that they will deny and blame other people to get rid of that shame. So once they realize that they're getting into a shame spiral, they'll be like, ah, yeah, it can't be me. And then they'll go back into that denying and blaming. They'll be like, it's the world. The world needs to change. The world needs to uh, treat me better. The world needs to accommodate me. The world needs to create spaces for me, you know? And that's how they deal with that pain of shame. Um, if you don't help them, if you don't meet their needs sooner as or as soon as they ask you, they will become resentful towards you and they'll be the people who will be like, oh, it's like you people don't care about me. And that is because you, you refuse to meet their needs at their time. Because sometimes it's draining for you as well when you find that people, this person keeps constantly looking for you to meet their needs all the time on their own time. Like they don't consider you. They only consider themselves. So they will become resentful if you don't help them. Um... In children, this externalizing behavior is sometimes misinterpreted as defiance uh, or, and, and opposition to authority and troublemaking. 
eh, behavioral problems in school they'll be called the children who have eh, behavioral problems wale watu wana suspendiwa all the time watu wana patikana na mererati you know they'll be found with they'll be found in in, in uh, watu wakipanishiwa jina yake kwa list you know let's find them there and 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 that's why even in our education system we need to become uh, teachers educators school system we need to become more uh, trauma informed and more trauma aware to realize that most people that you meet will have gone through some trauma of some sort and one of one, emotional neglect is a form of trauma it's a pain it hurts and so sometimes this behavior that this child may 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 display in school is not because they are defiant or they are opposing authority it's because they are it's their way to react to the pain of neglect of emotional loneliness so teachers maybe this is something to listen to and also consider um children uh, externalizers can be can be abusive to their fellow siblings and emo emotionally immature parents will let them get away with it so you'll find that uh, 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 when 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 your sibling is bullying you maybe they they are externalizers and you may find that they are the siblings that bully you and so instead of your parents correcting them or making sure that they don't bully you or they don't treat you badly your parent lets them get away with it because your parent might be let's say for example a passive parent and they do not want to seem like the parent who has who sets the boundaries who tells who sets limits who says no to this and the other and so your parent is like to protect themselves and not to protect themselves to make themselves feel better and to seem like the cool parent the good parent especially for this externalizer child they will not stop this uh, child they will not even they will not even like 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 reprimand them for for bad behavior or for 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 bullying their fellow siblings their fellow siblings i don't know if that's a word they won't they won't they won't stand up for the other kids they'll just let this child get away with um be disruptive behavior and and that's something to look out, to look out for so as a parent uh this is a call for you to to look at the behavior of your child and also to look at your own behavior are you an externalizer and and how is that affecting your ch your child and maybe your other children if you were brought up in a family where your parent was an externalizer aka an emotionally immature parent this is this is a uh, time to reflect on that and and think about the behaviors you saw them displaying because uh, as we said this whole exercise is to look at our parents objectively it's not to to blame them for anything it's not to say that our parents are bad or anything we just want to look at our parents objectively for the human beings they are not for the idealized versions we have in our head not for the for the people not for to demonize them we just want to see them objectively and that will require you to look at the characteristics of externalizers and how they behave and then compare that to what you saw in your parents and then you'll be able to understand if some of these things were common in your family were your parents emotionally immature so with that said i will um i will invite you to listen to this again if you have to and share this with a friend you can leave questions comments um in this uh, uh, questions or comments in the comment section below and then let's meet in the next video as we talk about internalizers and what it's like to be an internalizer so thank you very much and see you in the next one